What is going on everybody? My name is Earl here and what I have here is a late 2013 15 inch MacBook Pro. Now I'm making this video because number one, I'm gonna show you guys what things could go wrong when it comes to buying these older machines that are over a decade old, uh, let alone a 2013 right here. From the outside, this is again a 2013 and it looks really clean. I mean, you see there are no significant scratches, there are no significant nicks or, you know, just deep dents or whatnot. So you might think, whoa, this is a very clean machine. And then, you know, you look at the top right here, you look at the top and you could see how this is basically flawless. And for 160 bucks, I feel like that's a pretty solid deal, right? Well, there's always a catch when it comes to these older machines. Are you ready? Boom, swollen battery. Yeah, it's, it's very typical for this age to have a swollen battery. I feel like every Retina MacBook I've really owned has some sort of a swollen battery. The best part about these batteries is that they're glued shut to the chassis itself, so you have to pry them out carefully, which makes it really fun. I mean, back in the day, you know, before this, the pre-unit body uh, Retina MacBooks, uh, they're only held by screw, the battery. But with this one, these are held by a freaking glue. So I don't know what Apple decided. Why Apple decided to do that? It doesn't really benefit when it comes to thinness because, I mean, the MacBook Airs of the similar generation, they had screws on their batteries and you could easily just take it out. But with this one, yeah, that's going to be quite a bit of a problem and you have to be very careful when it comes to these swollen batteries because these are highly reactive cells right here. And you can really see how puffy they are. I mean, look at that. That's a pillow, man. Holy moly. Number one symptom for having a swollen battery is me unable to click the trackpad. Now I'm actually able to click it somewhat because I took out the bottom case as soon as I got home. But I also got this computer because this is actually going to be for my grandma, who's 2012 mid pre unit body retina MacBook. Uh, the speaker went out and instead of just trying to fix it, I decided why not just get a whole new computer for about 160 bucks. So that's exactly what it did. And I got this pretty solid deal right here. So we're going to go ahead and check out the specs right now. Taking a look at the specs right here. Again, this is a late 2013. This has a 2.3 gigahertz quad core i7, which is plenty enough and definitely an upgrade to her dual core uh, i5. This has 16 gigabytes of RAM, Intel Iris Pro graphics, whatever. One thing I did not check is does this thing have a dedicated graphics or does it not have it? Yes, it does. Look at that. This thing has a GT750M with two gigabytes of GDDR5. Now the GT750M is practically carried over for the 2014 model year. So between late and mid uh, 2014 MacBook Pros, uh, 15 inch, they essentially all have the same CPU, same graphics and whatnot. And even with the 2015, the performance with a CPU is very minute difference. And so I feel like these are one of the better values for the money, especially for 160 bucks. Uh, let's go ahead and shut this thing off before we end up in flames here. Knock on wood, Ikea wood. Taking a look at the side right here, as you can see, this was the time when Apple really loved their ports. So we have a HDMI, we have an SD card, which funny enough, they brought these two back on the newer MacBooks. We have a USB 3.0 and on this side right here, headphone jack and the MagSafe, which they also returned. And then obviously the headphone jack and the Thunderbolts, which no longer exists because we have USB-C. I already opened this thing, so it should be pretty easy to just disassemble this thing and call it a day. For the most part, it looks like we just really need to take this thing off and plug this thing just like that. The speakers actually on this also went bad, the right one. So speaking of replacements, I have a couple of replacements here, so we're going to go ahead and talk about what I got here. Link will be down in the description if these actually, whoa, uh, work properly. So I have uh, new rubber feet right here, which came with the speaker because the rubber feet on this bottom case, two of them is missing and look at that. The owner even put a the previous owner even put tape on it, which is kind of funny. The swollen battery really confirms my assumption of this being a desktop or used as a desktop computer because of these little stands right here, which actually is pretty cool. I mean, look at that. Gives you a leeway and breathing room for the fan. As you can see, we have, I don't know if this is left or right, but both of them 
are here and these should be compatible for 2013, 2014, and 2015, hopefully. Yeah, that, that looks like it's gonna fit fine. The only thing with the speakers is that you do have to take off the logic board, which is a bit more of an involved process, but I think that's definitely worth it, especially for these machines. I mean, personally, these machines are still perfectly usable, especially for, you know, just browsing the internet, doing this, yada, yada, yada. The most important thing for this computer is obviously the battery. So got this on Amazon, link will be down in the description. And this was one of the better rated ones. And also it came with a little battery remover right here, which we are going to need. And we need to do this carefully because uh, once we open the back right here, as you can see, this is adhesive. And you know what happens over time when it comes to the heat and cold cycles with adhesives, they become very sticky and with a swollen battery, you just really have to be careful because you do not want to touch any sensitive areas of that battery. So just to be safe, I have a fire extinguisher here right by my side just to be really safe because this is the first time I'm quite nervous about this. Okay, this is quite nerve wracking. I'm hoping everything will go well with this battery placement. So let's just go ahead and see if there are screws that are holding these batteries up. So if I just double check right now. Yep. Okay, so I think we should be good with that. Yep. So we really just need to start moving the speakers first. I, as, far, as far as I remember, we should do that because that would be a smart decision having some space. We're replacing the speakers anyway, so it gives us a better leeway. There you go. This one. And two. It looks like I completely forgot these two screws holding the battery. So I've kind of yanked out the uh, logic board for the battery. Looking at the logic board itself and whatnot, it's very clean. There is no signs of liquid damage and the liquid indicator right here, pretty dry, even on this side right here. So I feel like this is a really good buy. And I also forgot to mention that this does have the upgraded 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. And the best part about these computers is that you could even have a custom aftermarket SSD and upgrade it to an even further one terabyte or two terabyte up to your liking. But I mean, this isn't really going to be used for any more than just checking emails, watching YouTube and whatnot about how to take care of plants. So not really a big deal. I just want my grandma to have some sort of good display for her to see. And I mean, this literally weighs the same amount as her pre retina MacBook. The indicator is for this swollen battery, as you can see here, the liquid indicators right here, really isn't uh, tampered with. So I think really the best uh, explanation to why these have swollen is just being charged over and over again, uh, which means that this has sat in someone's desk for a long time to the point where batteries started swelling up because they probably have not unplugged it. So not a big deal, but definitely something to really be careful. Out with the old, and with the new. And look at the difference between that. This is like a very thin battery compared to the old one right there. So uh, let's go ahead and just clean this up just a bit. Honestly, personally, I personally don't care. I'm the one replacing and fixing this MacBooks anyway. So for me to take these adhesives out is just for the sake of YouTube, people complaining that I didn't do my job right here. But guess what? I bought these MacBooks. I can do whatever I want with them. Make sure we even have the proper battery because sometimes these normally have some clearance issues, which it looks like we might have. looks like this is way too long. This cable right here is quite tight or thick. So I can't really easily just, it's not very easily malleable. So we need to figure it out how we're gonna do this. Just push it just a little bit. Let's see if this thing boots up. Hopefully it does. Okay, here's the moment we've been waiting for. Oh, yes it does. Look at that. And you guys just heard the speaker pretty bad. And looks like we have a good amount of charge here. 84%. Let's go ahead and check out the specs of this battery. I'm gonna go to power, cycle, Look at that, 8,800 milliamps of new battery power. So I'm looking at the diagram of the speakers right here. Now I remember this right speaker, which if you flip this, is this one right here going bad. The left one should be fine. And guess what? 
this side right here seems to be the easiest access. So we have a screw right here, which is right there, and then one screw right here, and then one screw right here, which we already took. So we technically only need to take this thing out right here. A little bit of an update on this side of the speaker. It looks like in order for you to really fully remove this thing, you could see that we have a screw right here. <laughs> really, I don't understand why Apple does this. Uh, they should have just used adhesive to really take this thing off, but hopefully this is the answer. I'm not gonna remove the other one because it's still good and also it's original, so you don't wanna tamper with it. Don't break what's not broken. But I'm gonna try to put this thing back together, which is a little more involved, so it's really Now, before I get any further, I'm gonna go ahead and do a dust off of this computer. As you can see that that fan is pretty dusty. Well, both of the fans as well as that terrible thermal paste right there. So in order for me to clean this up first, I need to dust it off. So just like that, I've dusted off and cleaned it up. Okay, I'm using to put all these pieces Okay, so what we do now is put this piece back into place. Okay, we screw everything back together. Now we need to somehow put this back into place again. And then we have some clear situation on that. So it's supposed to be. So we need to do this. Okay, here we go. Come on. Look at that. We fixed the speaker. All right. One way to test this out is by going to my YouTube channel. Sign on Nexus. Now this is running Big Sur. It's not really a big deal because, I mean, this is just going to be used for a basic task. So no need for any latest and greatest Mac OS version. But let's go ahead and go to one of my YouTube channels right here about Minecraft. Speaker works perfect. Yes, these three very, very old MacBook Pros. This is a 2000... Wow, that sounds really good. And that we have, we have turned up the settings for the render distance, but still... Really good. Let's go to uh, no copyright music. Just test it out. And you can see how, you know, relatively quick this MacBook is even today. Wow, that speaker is working fabulous. Yep, look at that. Yeah, this is a uh, good work right here. Matter of fact, the original left side sounds more tinnier than the right side, which is a replacement. But yeah, it works. I'm generally excited for this because I feel like these are really hidden gems when it comes to. I've never really had good luck with these black rubber feet right here. They always just come out out of nowhere, but if this thing actually sticks here, that would be great. Just so, just like that. Look at that. Really clean MacBook. Oh my goodness. This is such a good looking laptop. I'm genuinely surprised by how well these designs have kept up over the years i mean you can't even tell this is a decade old take a look at that and by the way those stands on the bottom really works wonders look at that might be scratching my table but hey just put macbook we don't need any more of that mm -hmm. and restart so uh this is so different why is this all these things in here oh that's my youtube channel <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what that's what do? I do. I, I fix uh, I fix yeah, computers. Yeah. <laughs> so now now you see what I do with these MacBooks. So I I just disassemble them, this and that. Oh, so you have a uh, yeah a, a YouTube. Mm -hmm. I hope you get paid for that. I do. I do. <laughs> that's, good. that's good for you. In conclusion, I feel like buying these older MacBooks, 2013, 2014, 2015 is still a very viable solution for people who are looking for cheaper MacBooks or cheaper Windows alternative. And look at this, you get a metal casing, you get really good keyboard, 
really good trackpad, a really good display, which is Retina by the way, for 160 bucks. Yes, the battery might be swollen, which by the way is going to be most common issue with these older Retina MacBooks for some reason. I've literally dealt with thousands of swollen, not really thousands, but I've, I've dealt with a lot of these Retina MacBooks with a good amount of swollen batteries on them. So that's definitely one thing you need to consider. And a lot of them also goes bad when it comes to their speakers for some reason too. I feel like every time it turns 10 years old, the speaker just goes bad and I'm just like, <laughs> how does that even happen? It, it sounds like they have a time clock on their hands. Reasonably cheap parts to replace compared to, let's say a newer MacBook from 2016, 2017, 2018 with their more complicated thin design. I feel like these older unibody Retina MacBooks are just the perfect sweet spot. You can upgrade the RAM, but you can upgrade the storage. You know, it's like in between the transition between the fully upgradable MacBooks to the ones that you really cannot do anything with. Personally, let's say if you have 250 bucks, I think this is worth it. You might not get the best battery life, even when you get a aftermarket replacement, you could get a really good package for 250 bucks and i'm sure you could even buy better deals maybe a m1 for 300 bucks or 400 dollars if you can find one macbook air m1 but this is also a sweet spot because you can do so much with this computer by the way you can run windows on this computer you can run linux you can run whatever you want with this computer virtual machines and whatnot because this has an intel core processor because of the m chips you can't run Windows, which is really unfortunate, by the way. And so, you know, all in all, these MacBooks are still sought after because of that compatibility. Now, another thing also is that the parts are readily available. Now, the display might be on the expensive side. So if you find one with a broken display, you might want to reconsider because a lot of times the displays on these cost almost as much as the whole package itself. So just get yourself a decently good condition, 15 inch, 13 inch Retina MacBook. And maybe if it has a swollen battery, go get something on Amazon and call it a day. Don't touch anything else because things can go south pretty quick with these aging computers. Other than that, I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. This is really just a repair video on this computer. I mean, there's no need to show how capable, how capable this computer is because it is still plenty capable. You could run Photoshop on this. You can do some editing on this. Maybe not 4K, but... I mean, you know, that's to be expected. It's a $200 machine. Anyway, see you guys later. Peace out.